Welcome to Legislative Day 4, that we will begin as we do each day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 151st House District, Chairman Gerald Green. Chairman Green. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. This is the day that I have waited for for quite some time to be able to introduce a pastor of the day, my pastor. Many years ago, we had uh, an opportunity at our church to have a pastor, and he stayed with us some 35 years, and he passed away. Not only did he pass away, our piano player, his wife, passed away too. And the church sort of fell apart there for a little while. I was the only deacon left. I was the only Sunday school teacher. I was uh, about the only person attending the little country church. And we'd been in existence since the 1840s. The Indians burned our first church, and then we moved uptown to Springvale, Georgia, built a church, and then we built a little further down the road where we are today. I didn't know what was going to happen to our little church, but I asked God to help us. And one day he sent on a Sunday morning an individual to speak to us. Not only did the pastor bring himself to speak, but he brought a piano, piano player, 92 years old. And he brought a music director and members from his church at Shiloh. And from that day, we have joined together with Shiloh Baptist Church in becoming a sister church. And we have an opportunity every day every Sunday morning to start out, and then he goes to the next church. So he does two sermons each uh, Sunday morning. And this is Brother Phil Thomas. Dr. Thomas it has three doctorates. A very learned individual. He came from Fulton County. He saw the opportunity to come south into God's country, and he did it. And so today, uh, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Phil Thomas of Shiloh Baptist Church and Springvale Baptist Church. Dr. Thomas. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the honor of allowing me to speak with you this morning. You hold a coveted place in Georgia as being some of the most influential and powerful people in the state, and it's my privilege to be here today. But I want to bring a message to you from one more powerful. That's the God of the universe. And the message that I bring today is from the Old Testament book of Daniel. No doubt most of you had heard the story and know many of the details of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and their encounter with the king and his great furnace. You will find this story in chapter 3 of Daniel. The men were foreigners in the country where they were serving as government officials. They had been brought there after being conquered by the other country's military for the purpose of assimilating them in order to do away with their own culture. But their integrity was such that the foreign king placed them in positions of authority in his own government. One day, the king summoned all his personnel from the entire region with the expectation that they would worship a statue that he had built. This was a line that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would not cross. They were men of faith, and they knew that worship belonged to God only. The men had been told beforehand that they would face death if they refused the order of the king. The method of execution would be by being thrown into a furnace. In other words, they would be burned alive. The men refused the order of the king and was immediately reported by their enemies and those who coveted their position. 
They were brought before the king who confronted them and extended them the courtesy of giving them another chance to correct their previous mistake. They refused. The king reminded them he had power to execute them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego respectfully acknowledged the king's position, but plainly stated, quote, Our God, who we serve, is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand. But if not, let it be known we will not serve your gods, nor will we worship the image you have set up. You will recall that the king uh, was ill about that. He increased the heat of the furnace, had the men tied up and thrown in. The furnace was so hot that the people who carried them to the entrance of the furnace was killed by the heat. The Bible records later that the king looked into the furnace and saw four men inside instead of three, and they were walking around in the furnace and not hurt. The king commented that the fourth man looked like the Son of God. What we know since we have the full revelation of God is that the fourth man was indeed the Son of God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had stood for their convictions, and God noticed and intervened on their behalf, and the story records the results of that act. The Bible tells us that the men had no hair singed, no clothes were burned, and they weren't even sooty, nor did they even smell like fire. The presence of the fourth person in the furnace would have drew the heat away that would have destroyed them. Jesus is the Son of God, and his presence made all the difference in the world. The first thing we're taught in this passage about being faithful to the Lord is he will take the heat for you. The Bible indicates they were tied up when they went into the fire, but when they came out under their own power, only the ropes were burned away. The second thing we're taught then about serving the Lord is that freedom results from doing that. We are loose from the things that bind us. The next teaching has to do with public perception. There was no doubt about their relationship with God after they came out of the furnace. The king recognized them as servants of God who had been delivered by God, although he did put in a qualifying statement concerning that. The king noticed that God delivered his servants who trusted in him. In addition, God used the men to bring praise to himself. The king commented that there was no other god like the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and prohibited anyone from speaking evil of God again. From that time on, the men's witness were more effective than they had been in the past, and they were free to worship. A benefit the men received was that their enemies were brought down. The ones who threw them into the furnace initially were killed outright. The Bible doesn't say so, but it's safe to assume that those who have turned him in uh, never said anything negative about them again, and they were left alone to do their job. There's not even recorded another meeting with the king. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were also promoted. The last verse in chapter 3 states it plainly. Therefore, because of their stand for God, they were given more authority and status as a result of their integrity. Though the Bible doesn't say it specifically, this freed up other people in the area to be faithful to God as well. The men's faithfulness inspired others to be more faithful as well. By way of application, we can say that we don't have to compromise with the world to do the things that God has told us plainly to do or not to do. He is able to deliver us, and Jesus is always with us. Likewise, God doesn't necessarily keep us from a fire. The men had to endure the stress related to the incident. Travel, the hatred from others, the confrontation with the king, being tied and thrown into the fire. You need to know that we are not exempt from trouble. It will always be with us. But even if God doesn't deliver you through the fire, from the fire, he can deliver you through the fire. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to encourage you to be people of integrity like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and let God bless you the way that he blessed them. If you would, please, let's stand and have our prayer. Lord, we're grateful to you for this day that you have made and for allowing us to see it, be a part of it, and participate in it. And Father, I ask for discernment so that we know what your will is, and I ask for wisdom in how to carry that out. Again, Father, we ask that your word would take root in our heart and you would 
give us a recall when we need it. Thank you for your faithfulness to us, and we ask that you would guide us now in being pleasing to you. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, we ask. Amen.